man. After all this time, folks, it is finally here. Monday, yes. But more importantly, the end of uh, easily, for most of us, uh, the best season of Star Wars television we've ever had. And we're going to talk about it tonight. We're doing a full recap of the last episode of Andor Rick's Road. We're going to talk about the season as a whole. We're going to talk about the great speeches. We're going to talk about our weeks. Just more than anything, though, we're excited to be together. We're excited to chat. I got to say, after 190 times, I still get excited for West to punch it. to the Living Force, the UTD Network podcast, all about Andor. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Eilerson, and joining me tonight to chat all about the exquisite nature of this television show is the full cast of characters, starting off with the one, the only, the lack of superlatives else, Dr. Corey Helton. Hey, man. Lack of superlatives. I've had some pretty clever superlatives in my life. Um, I yeah. got uh, in medicine. I think I told you guys this on the show a long time ago. They voted me uh, most likely to quit medicine and go into finance. So I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> well, it means you were but, with some profit, some profits. I think is how uh, that works. Apparently, yes, that's right. Everything has a price. No. I will say I don't think I don't think you ever fulfilled that because we never had you teeny coin in the crypto phase. So I think that you avoided the, the stereotypical finance route. <laughs> That's true. I did watch several videos on crypto coin this week though, and then I sent some of them to you guys, which nobody responded to. I might add. So. <laughs> Absolutely, because I do not I do not support my friends' addictions. <laughs> Corey, unless the thing I didn't notice that. <laughs> Corey, well, do yeah, you, you're like, do you get sweaty when you do your sim racing? Uh yeah, why you see my sweatshirt back there? And I see you like your that? fan right there. That's Dude, just listen, yes, I got a right fan on. right there. I got a, I got a I got a sweatshirt. And uh, last week I went to uh, another sim racing thing, and man, my on Saturday I went and my like traps and like scapula. Oh God, I'm like in so much pain from the turning. <laughs> the thing was so hard for like two hours. So you know, I played video games too hard, guys. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel so bad for you, man. Um, but I'm going to use that to introduce our next guest, who also saw an 11 p.m. Slack message from Corey that says, check out crypto, and immediately said, absolutely not. It's mm -hmm. Dr. Charles Hankel. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how to manage my real money, let alone my fake money <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, my non-fungible tokens or whatever. Yeah, Monopoly I don't know. Money. That's I don't it. know how to do that. But you have your fungible Christmas lights again. Any Any updates on the <clears throat> Christmas adventures? I know that... You were you were you were first in your neighborhood last time, which we appreciated. Any other? Uh, have you got any like mischievous notes from neighbors, like accusing you of of no, flaunting? No, no notes. Uh, but the the street has taken up our our call to action, and now there's only like one or two that aren't decorated. And uh, what else? I started buying Christmas gifts, so that's been good. That's been fun. I I try to start early, so they're already under the tree, nestled safely under Whoa! the tree. Wow. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. Look at that. You're, gosh, this, this this really this whole like having actual working hours and time off, it looks great on you. You got a you got a glow to you. So I'll take it. It's looking good. It's looking good. I like you um, better when you smoked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, as much as we love Charles's well, some of us apparently love Charles's glow. It pales in comparison to the luminescent light that is wafting off the glorious Adonis-like face and features of West Jenkins. God. Hey, buddy. Hey, everybody. Uh, you know what's wafting in here? My dog's flatulence. <laughs> it's going, it's, it's, Wes, I it's set you up with that, and then you were in love with dog consuming me. He's just, oh, my God. Um, wow. So I got to work early today. Um, I got to work at 630 and I Ew. filled up my water cup and I got coffee and I drank my coffee and then I opened my email and it said, there is a boil ban in Houston. Don't drink the water. So after I had my coffee, I was like, kind of feel a little funny. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
But, is this what lead poisoning tastes like? Yeah. <laughs> and this is before I brushed my teeth and I took a shower and I drank water from the, the refrigerator. So I'm all right. I'm still alive. My teeth fall out during the show. And it has something to do with why. the power going out at the water treatment facility in Houston, Texas. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it could nice. be worse, Wes. You could still have Deshaun Watson as your quarterback. Anyway, no. um, we'll get into that a little bit later, possibly. But most importantly, hello, everyone. Whether you're watching us live, watching us later, listening to us on your commute, walking the dog, whatever you're doing, we hope you're having a great time. Dishes crew, have not talked to you in a while. We know a lot of folks that do their dishes. Hello. We love you. No, do that one again. Yes. No, the other one. Okay, good. Excellent. You guys know that one person that worked for him, they are scared as hell right now. And I hope that uh, <laughs> I hope that, that freaks you out appropriately. But welcome to the Living Force. Uh, we're going to be talking all and or season one later today. Uh, the finale obviously aired last week. There was a ton of talk online about it. and We can't wait to get into it. But before we do, I want to do my little check-in with my friends. Um, we've been starting to do this thing where we just tell each other about our weeks. We've teased it a little bit. Um, but I wanted to share with y'all something that I've been going through. Those of you on video will uh, obviously kind of see a little bit of a difference. Um, <laughs> I am looking to move in a couple of weeks. And this week I went home to Michigan for Thanksgiving. I did a six hour round or six hour trip one way, six hour trip back. I went to the Lions and Bills game with my dad. Great times. I watched the World Cup game against uh, was of Argentina. It was great times. But guys, I've been packing so much that I'm, I'm uh, as Frodo Baggins would say, I, I'm forgetting the taste of food. Uh, uh, the sound of water, like at the point. Remember strawberries. strawberries. No, I'm naked in the dark. I'm naked in the dark. That's how I feel. Um, so any 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 thoughts, prayers, vibes, force visions you could give to me uh, and Charlie as we we'll be packing for the next couple of weeks before we make our Eric, move you uh, look, down south. You look like you've been robbed by like the world's worst robbers because like the <laughs> the high ticket <laughs> items are still there, like the TV and like the PlayStation, but everything else yeah. is gone. Dude, my, my bookshelves are, uh, there's no books on them anymore. They're all in boxes back there. It, it's been weird. So it's been exhausting, but I, I have gotten a few things out. You know, I, I've told you guys, I've been trying to see my friends in Chicago before we leave. And I got to see one of my best friends, Lauren, last night. Charlie and I uh, went out with her and we saw Glass Onion, uh, the nice. new Knives oh. Out movie. Only in theaters for a week. No spoilers here. It was <laughs> phenomenal. Better than the first one. Watch wow. it when it comes out on streaming around Christmas. That's fantastic. It's, it's great Christmas break watch. So lots of highs and lows for me. Um, <laughs> but the, of course, the highest high is seeing you guys, of course. <laughs> You've been sharing uh, your photos <laughs> in uh you sharing your photos in Slack. And uh, I commented earlier that uh, it looks like one of those hoarder shows, like on TLC. Yeah. <laughs> <It's one> of, <laughs> <laughs> we have a bunch of people yeah. that are moving right now at Utini, and there was yeah. just a giant montage of people packing and moving and stuff and i'm like this looks like literal hell <laughs> it is it, it is sucks. awful it is <clears throat> but it's also weird. the holidays yeah, yeah sucks, what are we man. doing i, I like I it's know. such a bad idea but it is that weird thing like when you know, have a friend that like has a baby and then all of a sudden a couple of people have babies like it just seems to happen yeah at the same time <clears throat> and and meanwhile Corey, we know you're there like maybe we should have another i'm like and caitlin's like no we're not moving <laughs> uh, <laughs> i know for real <clears throat> yeah now, Charles, uh, I, I want to I want to throw to you because I you started to tell us a little bit about what Christmas gifts you bought. I one want you to tell us in excruciating detail what you've bought already to spoil that and um, how much it costs. Exactly, I want receipts, <laughs> and I also want your Pokemon progress. We know that you you got your starters going. Uh, how, how's how's the Scarlet Violet life treating you? It's good. It's good. I didn't have as much time to play recently, despite the holidays, because we went to Nicole's parents' place for Thanksgiving, and then uh, I came back here, and then Nicole stayed there to go to that Carolina Clemson game. Um, you know, that, oh, that Carolina wow. Clemson game where Carolina won uh, for the first time in eight years. And uh, go Cox. yeah, first time in program history that back to back weekends, we beat top 10 uh, programs. And so now <laughs> we're 20th, I believe in the most recent AP. So that's cool. Um, that was a lot of fun for me, not for Nicole. And uh <laughs> Yeah, but we still we still find things that we come together about like Pokemon. So we've been playing that. We evolved our Foy Coco. No more Foy Coco. <gasps> no. He now is I think his name is Crocolore, Crocolore, something like that. He's oh, not as man. cute. And I don't like the name as much. Um, but I had to evolve him because I gotta complete that Pokedex, you know. But we beat <laughs> our first gyms, you know. We're we're having fun. It's good. 
That's great. Well, now that South Carolina beat Clemson, does she feel the need to like have more progress than you in Pokemon to kind of like take back a little superiority in the house? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, mostly she just leaves dirty dishes around and tells me I have to clean them up. Um, (laughs) I have actually speaking of babies in, in Clemson, Carolina, one of my childhood best friends had a daughter recently and his wife went to Carolina with me and he went to Clemson. And uh, when Carolina won, they had to change their daughter from a Clemson onesie into a Carolina onesie. So now she has to wear wow. a Carolina onesie, I guess, for the next year. I don't know what the agreement is. but Yeah, it's like a trophy. Like, yeah. those, like the Paul, we got the Paul Bunyan trophy in Michigan, Michigan State, which I, I, I don't expect to have any anytime soon. Um, <clears throat> I think that's healthier. So, But that's good. I'm, you know what, Charles? I know that you are the reason that South Carolina won, so I'm proud of you. I you should own that. I actually at one point screamed so hard. Keep in mind, I was home alone. I watched this game by myself. Uh, I screamed so hard and ran a lap around my kitchen that I actually was seeing lights, and I think I was about to pass out, and I just laid down. <laughs> and then it, it took it took like a good thirty seconds to go away. I was like, "This is it. This is I'm gonna. This is it for me. Like I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go." go. This is how I go. <laughs> Nicole comes back to find you, and he's like, "Well, he died doing what he loved, rooting for the game Gamecocks." <laughs> Uh, well, hey, oh, let's keep man. let's keep it sporty here for a second, Wes. What'd you do, man? I see that you you got some activity on our chart here. Oh yes. Um. So <clears throat> Friday, it was raining down here in Houston, and we had a turn a softball tournament set up it's for raining Saturday. Sideways. That's right. <laughs> it's, <really funny. laughs> it's raining sideways, and um. <laughs> so it basically got rained out. But the psycho friends that I have found another tournament that we apparently got thrown on at the last minute. And so we nice. played a softball tournament on Saturday against uh, some pretty similar level teams, the first two teams, and then we played against a pro team. And if you want to know how bad you are at a certain sport, <laughs> play against a professional team that gets paid to go out there and do it. Because wow. they were hitting some rockets at me, and I missed one, and they all laughed at me. They didn't just oh like... Oh, my God. La- every one of them in the dugout just laughed at me. <laughs> wow! What's your, you I wasn't the only one. What's your, what's your, what's I still your position, haven't recovered, Corey. I feel terrible. What? What's your position, what, what's your position again? Remind I play me. right center field or left center field. Depends. Oh yeah, you're, you're not supposed to be able to be good. That's <laughs> the outfield. Come on, that's not how that works. What was the final In softball? Score of that they game hit was. lasers at you in the outfield. Oh, <laughs> what's yeah, that? Great question, Charles. Oh, the final what score. Was the final score. Yeah. They run ruled us, so uh, I think. <laughs> I think the middle of the second inning, no, the, after the second inning, uh, the game was over. <laughs> so it was like, oh my God. Yeah, it was like mm. 18 to one. That's what it was. And they, no, no, oh no. My. And they spotted us four runs. So we were winning in the first inning and wow. then they destroyed wow. us. So yeah. Wes, they, they I just went out there because they wanted to the practice, is what they said. Yeah. And I was like, whatever, guys. Y'all just went, did uh. that to boost your ego. But I had a good time regardless. So it was fun. <laughs> that doesn't sound fun to me, but I'm gonna. Pro- you know what? I'm glad you had fun, and my I will be proud of you again next week once you're a winner again. Corey, how's your week? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can get to that in a second. It does remind me when I was uh, when I was in high school. I played uh, I played tennis because we had two sports at my time. Oh, we hell school. yeah! We had basketball and we had tennis. The only two sports we had. And if you had, if you could tie your shoes, the amount of athletic prowess you had to have. But if you had at least that, then you were like legally obligated to play all the sports <laughs> and by all I mean two. So, you know, I was somewhat athletically inclined. So I, I was obligated to play both of the sports and uh, I played tennis and one year we got into like the regional tournament, like by default on accident. Like there was a team that like lost their some kind of sports accreditation because of some cheating scandal or something. And like, <laughs> And then there was some other team yeah! that, that couldn't do it for some serious. other reason. Anyway, like it was this crazy <laughs> turn of world events that like three different teams like didn't get, they could not get legally compete in the tournament. So we like were the only one left. So they had to let us in, even though we were terrible. We're having our tiniest public school in Georgia, right? With 12 people. And uh, I got dumped into the number one singles position in this turn in this <laughs> oh, tournament. Oh no! And we were playing against some some private school. I think it was like Lakeview Academy. It was like the name of the school. Sounds which, private. Like, it's, as, <laughs> it's as pretentious as it sounds, right? Lake and, uh, Academy. Yep. I know. If anybody's from Georgia, that listens to the show, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Lakeview Academy. Um, anyway, so I was the number one tennis uh, spot against like the best person in the. Friggin' state or something like that. And 
like he just annihilated me. Like it wasn't even like, even like, I don't think I even returned to a serve like oh, the whole game. No. And I got Damn. really pissed off about halfway through the game. Cause he was going to in the game in like eight minutes. Right. It was a good, yeah. the whole thing was going to be over. And so I just started angling the racket and there was a lake behind it, Lake View Academy, right? There's a lake behind him. And I just started lobbing him into the lake, like just over and over again. <laughs> I, I hit like four different balls into the lake. The kid got so mad. He destroyed a tennis racket. Like the pros do on, on TV. It's Why stuff. was he mad? Dude. Because it was annoying because you have to like go out and like like get a new canister of tennis balls and open it. It would take like five minutes or whatever. And I was just wow. like being a douche at that point. Wow. And, uh they finally got a ref involved and he told me if I didn't stop lobbing him over the over the over the over the fence, I was gonna have to forfeit. And uh I just <laughs> wow. Let it so you lobbed another one anyway. anyway. <laughs> I know, yeah, like, exactly. Try it was just me. Dumb. Yeah. Uh, the first time I lobbed it over the, over the wall, though, it wasn't on purpose. It was just because I'm bad. Right. And, uh, yeah, but then you were like, you know, wait a minute. That reminded me. So <laughs> I, I, I feel a little your pain, Wes, of, I know what it's like <laughs> to play against basically a protein. Right. And, uh, the kid still have nightmares about that. Uh, yeah, my week, um, not a whole lot. Uh, Kayla and I had a nice kind of private Thanksgiving, just the two of us. And, nice. uh, it was nice. We cooked a big meal and ham and souffles and it was fun. Uh, we cooked a big Ooh. meal, just the two of us. And then we had a bunch of wine and played the last of us too, which we've been working our way through a little bit lately. And <laughs> if you, uh, if you've never played, uh, the last of us, second of all, you need to do it while drunk. Um, <laughs> oh, third of all, okay. all the, all of the hate, uh, that the second game got because of, I don't know, annoying gamer culture Sexism. is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That game yeah. is phenomenal and yeah. is probably better than the first one, in my opinion. And, uh, that is blasphemous in certain circles, but, uh, yeah, we're having a good time. Last of us. It's really scary. There's, I feel like I need therapy nothing, after I play. There's nothing <laughs> that teaches you what you're thankful for. than. Uh, Kid killing zombies playing that game and being like, Well, I'm glad it's not a zombie apocalypse. I know. It could be that. worse. You know what? It could be worse. Uh, do you guys remember last year or something like two years ago or something when I went to like a light prepper stage? You guys remember that? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Oh, yeah, light. yeah. I bought like yeah. a backpack, like a, I put together like a bug out bag or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Like last year or whatever. And I was like, You guys should all have this of so just like emergency supplies and stuff. It was shortly after that, that phase of mine that I played the first Last of Us game and. If you'll notice, that's probably about the time that I stopped being like, let's survive the apocalypse because The Last of Us 1 made it very blatantly obvious that I didn't want shit to do with the apocalypse. Just <laughs> blow my brains out. It's going to be the end of it because that game is so freaking scary. I'm just yep. like, nope, nope. I'm just going to I'm just gonna take one for the team here. Yeah. Bullet to the head. That. There we go. <laughs> I always love that idea. Like, oh, yeah, 90% of humanity dies, and everyone assumes they're in the 10%. No, nah, man, I'm in the 90. There's no, no nope. way. Yep, I'm just going to find out. We are big bridge and jump off okay? of it if it's <laughs> a zombie apocalypse. No. Not my thing, all right? I just saw the bug out bag, though. It's in my closet. So, we'll yeah, no, that was a, that was a wild moment. For that, you just need it for that one time. You're like, oh, yeah. One time. I got it. I was prepared. A can opener. Yes, I got oh. a fire starter. I got a knife and a foil blanket and a compass. <laughs> a yes. Compass. Uh, oh, Wes, to be clear, you are absolutely going to be in the ten percent. You like, oh, you <laughs> like, you are going to be fine. He's going to go live in that deer stand that he's been building. Did you build <laughs> exactly. it yet? No, but that I keep like wanting to add on to it every time I like think because I have the base and I'm like I can put um, something here and I can put this there. But oh, I got to I have to read. I've done read on the plans three or four times now because it's going to be like so many different things I want to put into it. Yeah. Yeah. Tree house. <laughs> Just put it on put it on Airbnb and be or some shit <laughs> don't say that it's gonna happen there's apartments that are smaller than that in new york so oh, easy, easy. <laughs> an eight foot by well, six hey. foot place <laughs> uh speaking of you know Corey talks about uh just walking off a bridge into the ocean let's do the teeny fantasy football update real quick so um <clears throat> not good for me that's it um still losing i love football so much it doesn't love me back in utini <laughs> i don't know why every year i'm bad in our league um and jacob who may or may not be watching us tonight our buddy our spice down on the team uh beat me to he has players playing tonight and he doesn't need them he already beat me jacob yesterday. to be fair is in first place and so he's pretty much beat everybody <laughs> he started chuba hubbard and smudge jp ryan against me wes it is humbling <laughs> to say though in alexander anyway uh not great for me <clears throat> um very proud of charlie she did beat emma this week uh so again, proud boyfriend points. Uh, Wes, 
You, oh my God, I didn't look at this yet. What the hell happened to you? That's right. I decimated the, the worst crap team in the league. Out of <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so, okay. sorry, Oz, but yeah. It was it was revenge for <laughs> the softball yes. team beating the shit out of you, I guess. It was. Uh, no, yes. Wes had a good is the week. highest scorer in our league this week. Well had a good done, week. man. Thank you very much. Well done. I'm very, are you, yeah. It was to be, bound. it was to be expected. It was to be expected. No yep. big deal. Um, yes, yeah. playoff bound. I expect to get the bounty at the end of the season. Um, I know yep. we're not playing for money, but I still expect some kind of prize. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. The <laughs> year that I... you playing for money? Why is there no money in the Utini League? There should be. The, uh, the year well, that you should put it up, back. CEO. Yeah. Can I how, about, how, about, how about I take like a 2% management fee or some shit? That sounds like a good business proposition. It's like a $5 buy-in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, we'll do like a... I don't know, a $20 buy-in or something good. No, if I start winning, then we'll do buy-ins. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, JG in the chat, yeah. one of our buddies in the league. Uh, one of Jacob's losses is against you, JG. You did very well. Ooh. And that is uh, in, in payment for your Steelers being uh, in a rebuild. Did a rebuild. That means they're That's bad. A horrible word. Uh, so UTD Fantasy continues to go. Playoffs are coming. We'll, we'll let you all know who wins that. And for those of you that just skipped through these sections, we love you. And those of you who stay with you and stay with us through these, I love you even more. All right. Uh, only other update I want to give to the folks. Uh, we don't talk a lot about comics on this show, but I did want to just point out because it's not Marvel. Um, this week, the High Republic Adventures are back. Um, they're at Dark Horse now. We remember at the end of the High Republic Adventures run previously in IDW, it was crazy. Things got delayed. Things got moved around. Um, but I've been noticing on socials, it's not as prevalent right now <clears throat> that the High Republic Adventures is coming back. Daniel Jose Older, Harvey Tolabao are coming back. Young Sav Mulligan is in there. If any of those words I just said <laughs> make sense to you, make sure you go <laughs> to a comic book store or on Comixology on this coming Wednesday, November 30th, because that new volume is starting, and I just wanted to let you all know. All right. Next up, we have a quick thank you, thank you, thank you to our friends at patreon.com slash utini. Thank you so much uh, for supporting everything we do here. As a quick reminder, you're going to get your Star Wars Archives episodes. You do still have that actual documentary that is a fully edited, fully filmed documentary you can watch anytime you want. You have all our movie commentaries, and I will say, this has been a crazy end of year for Utini, crazier than honestly we've ever had before as far as scheduling goes. I think it's fair to say, gentlemen, that we are definitely going to be doing another movie commentary in the beginning of next year. It's been too long. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should. We'll be, yeah, so we're definitely going to get together to do that. And if it's, you know, if you're deciding, hey, what am I going to do at the end of my year? Do I want to help special. you go? Everything Holiday has special. a price. Everything has Holiday a price. Holiday special. Everything <laughs> has a price. That price is higher than most. But thank you all so much um, for your continued support. And as a quick reminder for all of you patrons and not patrons alike, make sure you get your pre-orders in for your new releases of Star Wars books. The High Republic Starlight Stories, all the short stories from the Insider Magazine of the High Republic are finally being collected. December 13th, they're coming out. And The High Republic, The Battle of Jeddah, the audio drama by friend of the show George Mann, is coming out January 3rd. So we get a month off of Star Wars books. And then we start the year with an audio drama of the Battle of Jeddah. I know one of our most anticipated books and or performances, I guess. Performance. Of the entire initiative. Perfor yeah, it's an audio drama it's good. performance, right? It's like a play. It's going to be great. All right. Now let's just get into it, y'all. We have been chatting about Andor on our Bounty Hunt show. And then last week, we brought it all into the main fold because, frankly, the show's too freaking good. Um, Not to talk about on Living Force. So tonight, we are about to go into full... Spoiler territory, full spoilers from here on out for the entirety of the first season of Andor. We're going to recap the finale of Rick's Road. We're going to talk about our favorite moments in it, what we thought about it. And then we're going to talk about the season as a whole. What did we think about Andor? Was it successful? Where does it rank as far as the live action Star Wars shows goes? Where does it rank in all of Star Wars even? We're going into that. This is your final warning. <laughs> we're spoiling everything. And I'm your good friend, Eric. Do not let my voice be how you find out what happens in the finale of Andor. Like, I'm not worth that, okay? Mm. All right, you're back. You watched Andor. Great. Here we go. <laughs> the finale, episode 12, Rick's Road. We begin. Everyone is coming to Ferrix for the funeral. Tensions are high. Brasso finds out the Cassian is coming back. And Wilmon, who we've seen in a few episodes, works in his father's workshop on an improvised bomb. Back on Coruscant, Mon Mothma figures out a way to disguise her money issues by straight up accusing Perrin of gambling, which he's not doing, we think, throwing him under the bus as their driver listens in, who's obviously been spying on her the whole time. 
Cassian then arrives on Ferrix and discovers where Bix has been taken. And as Luthen lands as well to kill Cassian, we are treated to a gorgeous monologue from Nemec's manifesto. He says, remember this, tyranny requires constant effort. Tyranny is the mask of fear. And he asks Cassian and everyone only to try. As Dedra learns about the rules placed on Marva's funeral back on Ferrix, the ISB reports the effective decimation of Krieger's forces. There's no witnesses. She's not happy about that. But Luthen's gamble seems to have paid off. Lenny is safe. Brasso then meets Cassian beneath the roads of Ferrix to deliver Marva's final words to him. Tell him I love him more than anything he could ever do wrong. Whew, not going to make it through this, guys. All right. Next up, up on the streets, the Time Grappler. King Hammerman begins the Song of Ferrix far earlier than the Empire anticipated, and the funeral procession begins. Citizens fill the streets with instruments and unite as one in the face of the Empire, with Brasso holding Marva's funeral stone as they all chant stone and sky. B2 comes to the front and projects a giant hologram of Marva Andor as she relays her final message to the people of Ferrix, saying, The Empire is a disease that thrives in darkness. It is never more alive than when we sleep. Perhaps it's too late, but I'll tell you this. If I could do it again, I'd wake up early and be fighting these bastards from the start! Fight the Empire! And they do. Brasso uses Marva's literal ashes to beat back the Empire with a brick. Cassian rescues Bix from her hotel prison, and Wilmon chucks his bomb into a pile of explosives. The fight continues on the street with stormtroopers firing at civilians, the time grappler banging the gong and kicking people out of his tower, and Dedra gets caught up in the fray with rebels ready to literally tear her apart limb from limb. But she's saved at the final moment by Cyril. It's a little sexy. As the dust settles, <laughs> Cassian brings Bix to Brazo, Wilmon, Jez, and B2 to help them escape to Ganji Moon, where apparently they'll be safe. Cassian has to stay, but he promises the saddest B2 you can ever imagine that he'll come find them. Bix trusts him to do so. On Coruscant, Mon Mothma abandons her white clothing to dress in traditional chandrolin blue and gold to bind her daughter to the son of Davil Skaldin. Her financial suspicion is hopefully paused for now. Finally, Luthen returns to his ship to see Cassian waiting for him. Cassian tells Luthen to kill him or bring him into the fold, and Luthen just smiles. post credit scene. There we see droids carrying the pieces the prisoners were constructing on Nurkina 5, and their connectors for a dome of some sort. And we find out Cassian was building the weapon that will eventually kill him, the Death Star. All right. Well, that's it. So, uh, um, that'll do it for this week's episode of Living Force. Right. Thank you, everybody. I <laughs> uh, will see you next week. See you later, oh. everybody. Hey. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I absolutely introed this with my thoughts. Mm. I think this is the best season of Star Wars television we've ever gotten. One of the best shows of the year. It's one of the best pieces of Star Wars media I've ever seen. This episode gave me everything I wanted. I'll be very easy about that. Let's open up the floodgates, y'all. Did they stick the landing? Is there a is there a real argument that this is not the best Star Wars has ever been produced? Frankly, yes, real is a there is an argument. I don't know if it's real, but there is an argument. Yes, I think there that are one people I that care are, about. <laughs> they're stuck to the movies. They're like the movies. No matter how bad they are, a movie is always even better than a TV show. But yeah, that's those fair. Are the people that don't watch the TV shows. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's fair. That's that's fair. I, oh I will say, I will say, it's a good thing to start on because then we can just shut the shit out. Uh, <laughs> I did see on uh, like Reddit or Twitter or some shit that apparently Star Wars, uh, uh, what's his name, Star Wars Theory. Oh, YouTube. Star Wars Theory! Oh, yes. this trigger you, you best. Oh no! Ah, screws! <laughs> ah, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> you just happen to have screws in. I'm breach? moving. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Star Wars Theory this week was really, really mad that screws and bricks are in Star Wars. Eric uh, Yanni bricks. <laughs> that would be Can you hilarious. imagine i wish no i don't know if that's are... actually true if he was actually that mad it was um, it is yeah that or that's but, what he said uh, i yeah. did i did see some a clip or something of what he said and stuff and he, i don't know man i don't know what the yeah. guy's deal is why he no. hates stuff so much he seems really unhappy yeah. but there... anyway i don't <laughs> yeah. like that i don't think it's a good <laughs> argument happy. uh no. star uh screws yeah. and bricks being in star wars is kind of, is, is fine yeah why god's hey. little communicator is a gillette razor <laughs> yeah like, yeah <laughs> No, there's a great quote, though. I believe uh, I, I think Stephen Ken posted it. It's a political quote that's like, it is hard to understand something when your paycheck relies on you not understanding it. Yeah, that's fair. And I think that's like, you know, at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. That, you know how many people that I know don't follow theory linked that clip and got him money <laughs> by posting it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't, I don't think I've ever 
I don't think I don't know that I've ever publicly called somebody out like this on the show. Maybe we no, have you have that. But uh yeah, I mean, I don't know what that guy's deal is, man. Um I'm generally worried about his mental health. <laughs> yeah. How else do you um, hold stuff together? Screws is, is perfect. Dave, nails will <laughs> nails will come out. But with a I, screw, yeah. it yeah. stays if in there. If Star had more <laughs> screws, maybe it would have done a little better. better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, you know how they could have fixed that that exhaust port? How about four screws and a block yeah. of wood? That would have fixed it. Just no? one brick. Just one brick. One brick. brick. <laughs> one brick of a human. <laughs> so bricks yeah. and screws aside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so anyway, that's dumb. It does remind me though, because we've talked about this recently, uh, that the original Thrawn trilogy, considered to be like you know one of the OGs of mm-hmm. Star Wars books, like like one of the first scenes in it, Luke name drops hot chocolate hot that chocolate. he went from Lando, and I'm like, <laughs> I bet that bit he's not mad about hot chocolate, but he's yeah, about bricks but and screws, screws and but bricks. Was he talking whatever. about was, the drink? Was dumb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's talking about hot chocolate. He's like, the this Empire, wonderful, yeah. con- wonderful concoction that Lando taught me about is called hot chocolate. It's a weird yeah. scene, man. It feels yep. very out of place. But Zahn got a lot of hate for that too. He openly talks about that. But yeah. Anyway, that was a that's a stupid ass yeah. argument. Uh, I don't everybody. know if there are if there are real genuine like is there real genuine arguments that there's stuff not to love about this show. I guess you could say the pacing was a little slow at times. I agree or disagree. Yeah. In that. Yeah, not I, in this episode. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> like, this episode, um, I do well, generally think that you could you well, could make a, a strong argument that that this could compete with Empire of being like, I agree. literally the best Star Wars ever. I agree. I mean, man, away, just man. can't believe <laughs> can't believe we made it to the end and it it yeah. kept it up the whole damn time. Like I mm-hmm. just can't believe it. Just yeah. like speaking of the end, they only mentioned it one or two times when they when Cassian and um and the other inmates were in the prison and they were like, we don't even know what we're building. Like, what are we building? And that was like it. There was only like yeah. two. There was like two times they said it, and that was it. They didn't yeah. like keep harping on it to make people think like, oh, you, you better yeah. try to figure out what they're building because it's going to be something big. They just asked twice, and that was it. And some people forgot, much like myself, when I just heard Eric say that was the, that was what they were building with the Death Star. Just figure that out along with everybody else go. on the show. That, <laughs> that was brilliant. That shot was. <laughs> That shot was super cool too, man. It was like the Very suspended Rogue One in space. Obviously. Oh man, yeah. that was that was great. That was great. Yeah. What a nice little way to tie up that loose end, too. That was really yeah. clever. And I'm just blown away. I don't know if uh, you know, I don't really know how movie making works, how TV shows work, especially when you're dealing with an IP like Star Wars. Like, mm-hmm. is this is this all truly Tony Gilroy's genius that made the show? Like. It's a great question, and I would actually, all of our listeners, I would highly recommend there's a podcast on the Ringer Network mm-hmm. called The Watch. Um, mm-hmm. It's all about TV shows, and they've interviewed Tony Gilroy three times during Andor. He came on three different times. He just came on for the finale. Talks a ton about how the show was made. It's really, really mm-hmm. fun. Interesting. Very casual guys. Um, really great uh, interviews, really great discussions. And he talks so much about his team, like the production designer, um, the <clears> movie guys, but like you know, the too long didn't read of it is essentially this is Gilroy's baby. Like from conception to writing of the scripts, like the writer's room is him, Bo Williamson and his brother, uh, Tony Gilroy's brother. So like they're very in here. The the idea, the execution as showrunner is so, is so intense. Like he's not directing these, right? He's not writing every script, but I think part of the reverence for the craft of it all, like the reason that it's all yeah. so good and the reason the talent is, that's a showrunner picking people and creating a team that does this. And I was mm. wondering, you know, I, I tweeted this out earlier this week, based on the interviews we've seen with like, you know, not only Diego Luna, but like Stellan Skarsgård <clears throat> and Fiona Shaw and, and, and Genevieve O'Reilly, like this seems like one of the first Star Wars shows where like the cast and creatives really seem to like each other a lot. Doesn't it? Like, they yeah. really seem to give vibes of I love making Antor. <laughs> like yeah, and not just because it's Star point. Wars, but because of the people they come to work with. Yeah. yeah. It is more of an ensemble than anything we've seen before, though. So oh, to yeah. be fair, I think people have got more time on this show together. Yeah. And they're filming on location, right? So it's not like, <laughs> oh, I'm in the volume for this two hours and then it's the mm-hmm. next person's turn and we don't interact. It's like they're yeah. going to all these places. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I imagine they got a lot more time together, but they do seem to be very close knit. Yeah. And it's not so much like, and I think there's always, there's also been this disproportionate, um, like if you like and or you can't also love Mandalorian, like we're not always in on that. 
But it is interesting to hear, like, I love working on this show because there's this amazing, like, Grogu robot, and I love interacting with it, and the technology's amazing, versus, like, I get to say a monologue about the fascism, and, like, it's just, like, it's just different, and, like, <clears throat> there's just, I mean, Nemec's speech in this, and, I, and we'll get to the speeches about the show in a second, obviously, but, like, that moment where he's just, from the afterlife, talking about the Empire, and yeah. we're seeing all the characters basically react to tyranny, and how does the em- like, it, the best written books don't have that level of complexity about I the see, empire. Yeah. I just can't, like, I just can't, wow. I just don't, I just cannot believe they got it so right. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know that there, that there are very many shows like in, in, in television history that have gotten everything right. The director and the actors and the writing and the dialogue and the music, like it just was mm. a, damn near flawless experience from end to end and like i just can't i cannot name another show that's like breaking bad maybe like is yeah, pretty close that, i that's guess what I compare like, it to honestly i just can't believe that it doesn't it feels like like we're insane i i feel insane for saying this i yeah. feel like like i'm shilling this like but yeah. like it's true though <laughs> i genuinely right there I genuinely cannot find very much wrong with it. There's a couple tiny little scenes of CGI. And yeah, I didn't really love the aliens of last episode in a, in a couple ways. But like, other than that, like, Mm-mm. I just, I just can't believe they got it so right. And now it begs the question, how has every other Star Wars project got it so wrong? If this is possible, like, yeah. what is the magic recipe the formula to make this happen again like i don't i don't think it's is replicatable like yeah they have i I think they have a good like a good um ending point so they can because i think like with great point with the mandalorian and with the book of boba fett there isn't an ending point right there's something that they can keep writing story of that for years and years and years i guess they wanted to but this like has a final a final yeah, piece yeah. and they can they can tie in these pieces that will yeah. bring the moviegoers and like in the the book readers as well to um to this particular show based on those instances that they've seen or, or read in a book and yeah. not yeah. just like a not just yeah. like a story in either though like a hard slamming the book yeah. close ending because everybody dies yeah. right yeah. Like in- <clears throat> and and they've all been so <clears throat> blunt about it and i think that like the the source material you have until then is also so impactful, right? Because we love Star Wars for so many reasons. We get our space Jedi stories, you know, warriors with swords. That's great. That's so much fun and great. We get bounty hunters. Oh my gosh, westerns. I love westerns. Those are a lot of fun. <clears throat> this show is at its core about meeting people that are living their lives and they're they're feeling a little off, but they're dealing with it. And then we literally get to watch people have their rights stripped away by a fascist government and get ground harder and harder until now in this episode, they literally use the will and ashes of their dead to fight against their oppressions, oppressors with no real weapons, but knowing that the literal blasting the music of freedom in their streets to fight the empire. Like the, the, the stakes of this show. And I think that's also why the original trilogy works because they're fighting an empire. Mm -hmm. This is a government. This is the universe. And they're like, you know what? We all, if we speak out here and we speak out at Aldani and we speak out at the prison, all of these arcs had a lot of people die. A lot of people that we met for two episodes died, but they did their little rebellion and they did their little rebellion and they did a little rebellion. And now this episode is saying, you know what? The spark is now a fire and we're just going. And like, yeah. that's not, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and every time there is like a big spark moment too, the dialogue is just unbelievable. I mean, we had so many incredible like speeches or monologues in this show. Like, yeah, let's just, go through them. I just, I just, don't, I just still can't get over. <laughs> I just still can't get over how good the dialogue is. We have it. This is, this exists in the same universe as attack of the clones. How is that possible? <laughs> there it is. There it is. How is yeah. it possible? You're training to be a Jedi and I'm, I'm a senator. How is it possible that this is the same universe? I just don't understand it. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's yeah. brilliant writing, and I don't know whatever whatever recipe they did. Like, part of yeah. me is also in the camp though of like Tony Gilroy. He needs to have this beautiful platinum plated beauty and then walk away, and never come back. I think he might. Legit. Yeah. He's gonna. I think he, he's gonna Tarantino should. it. He's I gonna think, make his yeah. ten, and he's gonna leave. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's well, I think it's what he's going to have to do. And I want to ask you guys that based on so the speeches, especially because I, I the second half of the season, like really just went so speech heavy and and not to not to overplug, but on the watch, Tony Gilroy does talk a lot about how that's not hard for him. He's like, I can write a speech like it's really like f- getting Cyril to Ferrix was actually harder for him than writing a speech. because He's like, how do I make that make sense? Tony but, Gilroy would survive the apocalypse. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you, I think we got four main speeches in Andor. We have the Kino Loy, there's no way out speech, um, or the, or the um, one way out well, over the mm-hmm. over the comms. Yeah. We got the big Luthan speech. I, I'm, you know, burning down a sunrise I'll never see. That big one. Yeah. So we got good. Nemec's literal manifesto this episode about right. tyranny mm-hmm. and what the Empire looks like. And then we get Marva's, if I, you know, don't sleep <clears throat> evil and tyranny, I, if I would be fighting these bastards forever. I think those are yeah. the four giant epic. And it's crazy. If we gotten one of these speeches in the series, I've been like, amazing. Yeah. Holy crap. And, now we four, four. and they're all, <laughs> and they're all flawless. Yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, just, just know, pure man. simple. What's your I favorite think, speech? I think Luthen's is probably my, my favorite of all three of them. I I mean, there, there was some, there was some dark shit in there, man. And I wish <laughs> yeah. we uh, I, who, I don't remember who that was in our in our chat last week that was that was talking about the uh he kept dropping the quotes. It was just like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many good ones. And uh I don't know though. Marva's this episode was pretty was pretty hot. That was a beautiful scene. Just all oh yeah. And, yeah. Like this was just a beautiful scene. The cultural symbolism here was incredible. We'll come back to this in a second, but speeches, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I think it depends too on you know how are you grading these things because I think the actual like the actual writing of Luthen's speech was the best. Be, sure, you know, we're yeah, mentioning yeah. some of those lines that were yeah. genuinely like stirring and like made yeah. me sit back and think like, how, who thinks to even say that? But yeah. then on the other side of the spectrum, I thought Marvis was pretty straightforward, right? She was like, wake mm-hmm. up, fight the empire or mm-hmm. something else. The empire, if you follow certain circles online, apparently. <laughs> but, yeah, right. But I, it was like, very emotionally packed right especially with her talking about how you know i used to come to these things i used to come to these funerals and i learned from you know the dead and now i want you to learn this for me like that (laughs) that kind of setting it up to then go actually fight the empire right then and there that was probably had the most emotional weight for me yeah yeah Yeah, i forget about all the way that she talks about knowing the stone and and just, I mean, one, the idea of, of the city being built by the dead. Now every brick you see, like, you know, how many of their ancestors are surround them constantly and her realizing her legacy is now going to be more than that. Also, she's a little force ghosty, which is fun. Um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Blue hologram, yeah, force ghost. Yeah. A little something. And you knew, um, you knew something was coming when she said, but we were sleeping. Yeah. But we were yeah. sleeping. And you're like, oh, yeah. she's going to come with something hard. And I, I was I was just... it. I felt like it took a little long to get to when she was getting to, but I appreciated that the anticipation made me like lose my mind when she really started getting into it and like yeah. really fired up the crowd, fired up her followers, and mm-hmm. oh man, pushing yeah, she through was dead, those guys. Wes, she, that's all she gets. Their last words. She gets a little. Yeah, where is she? she, where is she <laughs> like, what made her like record that before she died? She was like, okay, I got eighteen hours left. I guess. But what, what like, if she like didn't Stark have 18 hours game, left? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. It's like when Tony did his whole thing to like, hey, guys, you know, and like you, when you kind of yeah. have that vibe. But yeah, uh, but she did dress up, though. She's like, I'm going to die in a day. Let me put on my my finery. I know. I'm going to look that. good. I'm going to look good. Yeah. Maybe she yeah, recorded it like maybe she recorded a while ago. I mean, it, maybe she yeah, did. A decent Ooh. amount of time has passed. Remember, we, we had yeah. the prison. It was a big time jump. Yeah. Right? Like a couple and, months. We fe- I feel. Yeah. It, I forget. It was like, yeah, it was like two yeah. months or forty-eight shifts later or something, right? Did yeah, because last time yeah. we saw her, she was wheezing, prison. right? She yep. was wheezing and she couldn't really talk. She was having, she's having trouble breathing. So it gets cold. <laughs> Turn on the heat. We keep maybe saying she, that. All right, here we go. I got it. Maybe, maybe she knew that either illness and death were going to get her, or the empire was going to get her. One of the two. Oh, totally. Like, because she bought into the, uh, she bought into the rebellion thing early. It looks like so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, speaking of that, um, I think last episode or no, two episodes ago, uh, Brasso was talking to somebody, to the doctor, and they're like, what was she doing? And they said she was uh, trying to pry open an entrance for the underground tunnels so the rebels yeah. could get in. Yeah. You guys know how Cassie <clears throat> got into the hotel? 
That's true. He used those tunnels, man. He used oh, those tunnels. Nice. Oh, did. So all did. those little things. She was paving the way for him even when he wasn't there. So I think Marva's for me had to hit the hardest emotionally. I, I want to also give a, a, a nod at the cap, if you will, to, to Nemec's manifesto mm-hmm. speech. I think, one, we talked about this actor during the Aldani arc. The way he speaks is just so endearing. Like his, his vocal... Kate, just the way he sounds is so great. And I kind of hope that we get a full audio book of the manifesto one day, just because I want to hear him do the whole thing. But maybe it was, you know, the, uh, the context of it, seeing everybody react to it. But it was one of the most effective discussions, I think, of the source material I've ever heard of like, this is how the empire goes. And also, I love, <clears throat> I love the idea, one, of flipping do or do not, there is no try to try all you can do is try a nice little yeah. fun flip of, of star wars mythology but also the way he just goes to um you know we always hear all oh, rebellions are hard and what can we do no tyranny is hard because it requires constant effort yeah. so all you got to do is find when the empire is lacking and which goes back to cassian's whole you know oh they don't notice me i can just slip right in like yeah all of them slowly realizing that the empire actually isn't on top of their game once Dedra is in the street, she's done. Like, there's so many little things. I think that monologue for me really just kind of illuminated, oh my God, if the galaxy here is this, that is when the rebellion rises up. Because then you realize, oh my God, we're not on the defensive, they're on the defensive the whole time against yeah. us. And that's how, like, every revolution in history, every country in the world that has had a revolution, that's what it is. Yeah. Do you think that Nemec's manifesto ever makes it out to like the rebellion at large, or is this purely something that question. Cassian uses? Well, fun fact, Charles. On the Twitters, there is a theory currently. In Rogue One, Cassian has something on his jacket that is tied to his blue jacket. And it looks very suspiciously like. The manifesto. It's very so similar in size. Be a I've seen the picture too. I don't know, if, but, I don't know where the songs, so it gets, but yeah, it's, so it's it about the right size up. and stuff. It's possible. Yeah. It it's does possible. keep going up. But, I, yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't know, know if how... we hear it, but I mean, yeah. it's possible. I mean, come on. You tell me that in maybe like 2025, Luke Skywalker in a comic can be reading Namek's manifesto? Probably. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they could totally do that. <laughs> oh, they could totally boy. do that. Yeah, right yeah, there. Thing, there it is. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Good find, Wes. That's I about mean, the right size. That's almost a, that that's it, dude. That's the same size. It has to be. I it. think I I think <sighs> I think it is. I that's, think it is. That's wild, man. That's really, really wild. Like what um, what were they thinking in, in Rogue One though? When they that's just a thing that was on his oh, yeah, jacket? No, no, this is absolutely a retroactive <laughs> Like yeah. maybe, <laughs> maybe though. I mean they 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 always like a lot of the things that are on costumes and stuff are named though, right? It could be a flash. Something comes, something comes out of it. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's so a maybe, maybe <laughs> it looks like a flask. <laughs> maybe, maybe if somebody has like the rogue one, like uh, what's it called? Visual dictionary. Yeah. Thing, maybe you should look up and see if this thing is in there. And Pablo like, Hidalgo, someone asked Pablo Hidalgo. Yeah, what that is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what the thing is, because maybe, maybe they said yeah. it was a manifesto and that's where the idea for Nimix manifesto came from was that. Oh, that'd yeah. be cool. Like I would, hmm. I love that idea. I hope we, Again, I think next year, the fact that we're doing... Mm-hmm. There's a year time jump until the first episode of season two. We, they've said that. Then there'll be three episodes a year, three episodes a year, until we get to the beginning of Rogue One. I, <clears throat> so we'll see I how do, that I do out. like that we... It's a, it's a fun question to ask, Charles, I think, about does the manifesto ever come yeah you know, come back in any ways because like we got to see sides of the rebellion we've never seen before with this show mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I, I think Rogue One did that more than anything did is like the OT... Yeah. Like oh, the o- the OT me- the OT like rebellion was very one sided. Like there was nothing else. They're all just you know it was very classic hero's journey. They're just a bunch of heroes. We're the good guys. Those are the bad guys. Like there wasn't any depth really to the rebellion. Yeah. And like Rogue One added in you know Cassian's character's existence added in this whole you know we're assassins and saboteurs. Saboteurs. Like, I mean that was just like brilliant that like there's this dark side of the rebellion that they don't like to talk about and then this show has added lots of other stuff right we have all this political yep. intrigue and how dangerous it was to be a, a leader in the rebellion with mon mothma story and we got this like we have the political ideology people who are still like like on the ground like nimic and stuff mm-hmm. that are like the revolutionaries and it was just, it's just adding so much depth to the idea of of rebelling against and 
an evil government. It's just really brilliant storytelling. Yeah. And very reflective of real human history and yeah. revolutions well, we've seen. I mean, Tony Gilroy said in a great thing. Again, I, sorry, I had a, I had a twelve hour road trip. I listened to a lot of the watch. That uh, sounds like I was all his interviews. <laughs> He said that a lot of people are, are saying, oh, he's clearly commenting on current political this, current political this. And while you can definitely attribute it to that, he's like, I'm just, this is all of history. He's like, yeah. we're not current. We're, we're looking at every, like the Haitian revolution, like every revolutions of every country. Yeah. Also as Americans, like a lot of stuff has happened outside our country. Like this is all based in mm -hmm. that. Like there's not, it's not anything new, which is crazy. Cause while in Star Wars it is, it's all been happening for forever. Um, but I want to hit. I want to hit on one thing, Charles. I see you wrote our it, outline here. It um, sounds like. Sorry for interrupt. It no, sounds no. like. It sounds like Common Sense by by Thomas Paine. I'm not sure if yes. you guys ever ever had to read that. I'm gonna like read Common yeah. Sense by Thomas mm -hmm. Paine. Yeah, exactly. The the, the, the manifesto. It, it sounds like <laughs> yeah. T Paine. Oh my sense by god! <laughs> I've never put that together. I mean, it sounds very. It very. It sounds very very similar. Like as long. Oh like, sure. Here, I pulled some. I just pulled this up. Like do it, man. Like it says, like as as a long and violent abuse of power is generally the means of calling the right of it in question, and as the king of England hath undertaken in his own right to support the parliament in which he calls theirs, and as the good people of this country are grievously oppressed by the combination, they have an undoubted privilege to inquire to the pretensions of both and equally reject the usurpation of either. Like it sounds like that Nemec's could manifesto. just be Nemec. yeah, yeah, absolutely. genuinely, and you like can it's hear it's. Him. It's very clear that that they base this type of writing off uh, of revolutionary mm. type writing otherwise. And yeah, I just that, that's just, that's such a brilliant angle of the rebellion that I've never seen before. I've never seen that in in books. I've never seen it in comics. Like it's just a it's a new level of like quality depth quality depth. intelligence <laughs> in star wars that we've just yeah. never seen i mean this has always been a fun fantasy universe that yeah. has some really heavy hard-hitting themes but they often don't really do a great job i think of capturing the the depth in a lot of ways because yeah. at of the end of the day it is still government yeah like, it is still it like is. a sci-fi show for kids right so they, they yeah. sometimes miss the depth. like this is the first truly adult piece of star wars media yeah. we've ever gotten and i just they just got it so right it's just unbelievable the only kids i want in andor are the dying ones in the headphones um oh my god oh. sorry anyway um i <laughs> i did want to say holy to get away crap, from that because i do feel better i do feel better <laughs> we're gonna talk about picks in a second um charles you have a great point in our outline here about another character that i think we saw change <clears throat> decently in this episode and oh my god might be Such my most anticipated call. come on charles <laughs> you gonna hit us with that okay. he didn't come uh, back <laughs> no quad paw lack of quad paw. quad nah more like it oh, um wow, wow. Yeah, I feel bad about that. Uh, no, my most anticipated uh, character for season two, uh, Luthen, Luthen Rail. Um, yeah, a lot in yeah. this. So, 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 TS up. What did what did Luthen do for you this episode? And what what did we see? And what are we gonna like chat out a bit here? Well, I was intrigued by Luthen because what Corey was just saying about how the rebellion changes so much in this time period. The rebellion is so different than what we see later on. What we were first introduced to in. The original trilogy like can you imagine if princess leia was just like yeah we got to kill one of our people like he he knows too much like we got to go <laughs> right? find this guy and and we got to take him out no but here we saw luthan showing up on uh ferrix with the singular intent it seems to mm -hmm. kill cassian like he was yep. there kind of for the same reason as the empire the empire wanted him alive whatever but basically cassian knew too much we need to we need to take this guy out mm -hmm. yep now i was sort of intrigued by this i didn't fully understand this to be honest with you uh reason being i didn't know exactly why cassian had to die with no conversation um you know it seemed to me like cassian could have turned him in in any of the time that he was imprisoned like if that was his intent or if that was something that he you know thought he might do so i didn't fully understand why luthan just was like all right we got to take him out rather than have a conversation because then as soon as they did have a conversation and cassian was like i'm gonna join you but if you got to kill me you can kill me mm -hmm. luthan smiled <laughs> immediately and you're like yeah we'll 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 keep you with us then but it's like Ooh. what couldn't we have talked about that before the plan was to kill <laughs> cassian like couldn't we have had yeah. the conversation first <laughs> 
So, yeah. so that part kind of threw me off, <clears throat> but it does show that shift. Maybe that exact moment was the shift where we see where, okay, now it's weird to kill our own people. Like maybe that, that was the moment that we made well, that change. I'm going to offer an idea that's not mine, but I saw it. And I think it makes sense. Um, yeah. uh, our buddy, uh, Brad Whipple over at Friends of the Force had a great Twitter thread uh, today about this exact moment. And he made the argument that I think makes complete sense to me. And Luthen's mind was changed by Marva's speech. Because I think up until this time, Luthen, it was like him and Clea in the shop, him and Mon in the streets. Like it's been one on ones and very little things, right? And now Marva makes this epic speech. And then he sees the planet of Ferrix rise up. And now he has the son of Marva who's coming to him saying, Kill me or bring me along. I'm ready to die for this. I think Luthen's finally realizing, oh my God, <laughs> all the puzzle pieces I put in place are now working. All, all my, my chess board is actually moving and I don't have to mm. do it alone. Mm, and yeah. I think that's, that's the moment is that he realized Marva Andor inspired a, a planet. I think Cassie and Andor can inspire a galaxy. I think that's yeah. what he is. Oh. I think uh, that just came I, to me in the moment. Yeah. I'm going to own that. I feel good about that. I feel good <laughs> yeah. about that. that Move me a little bit, scared. Eric. I like that. I'm going to I'm going to use that with my Star Wars friends at work tomorrow. I'm going to say it was mine. <laughs> Do it, man. You can own that. Beg, borrow, and steal, baby. But yeah, that's, I think that's what it is. Luthen was also getting pretty desperate too. I think. I mean, he said yeah. in one of the previous episodes that like I was. Uh, what did he say? I was. I was slipping. Am I slipping? Like, can't tell you his words. Am I slipping? Or, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, I man. Was, I was reckless or something like that yep. about Cassian saw my face and that sort of thing. He knows my real name. And yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's very, I do think it's a good, good question, Charles. And I think we were supposed, to, I think we're, we're meant to be a little confused about that as the viewer. And I think it just adds in, it adds in that, that intrigue and that constant worry. Like, am I going to be outed? Like, like, is, you know, have I, made a mistake finally a, a poor calculated risk finally you know and i think we're meant to feel that that sort of stress that luthan i guess is under in a lot of ways um i yeah. love the dialogue too at the very end when cassian said uh something like take me in is that what he said take me under yeah, like, take kill me, me kill, kill me or kill me. take me in take me in yeah that's what take he me said. in which also again line. he's lost his he lost his clem a while back which by the way I, one thing i missed the first watch um, Clem, his father's stone is the one he visits first. He mm -hmm. see, he checks in with his father, I, I and then yeah. yes, he's lost his father. He's lost his mother. He is kind of looking for belonging now. He can't stay. In, he's like, take me in. I'm ready to be a part of something again. I've been running to Niamos. I've been running away. Take me into the fold. I'm ready to be a part of something. Which is also interesting because he then before this told Bix, Brazos, B2, the B Squad, um, that like <laughs> a lot of bees. Um, like I'm, I, I'll be back, and I do think he meant it and trusted it. So as he's saying that, I think Come he's like, I'm ready to, to live. Be with this. <laughs> really, that's where he is, right? And I think he's like, I don't think he's gonna kill me because now I understand him, and I understand the rebellion now because of Marva's words and because of Ferrix, mm. and because like he's now seen three different rebellions, right? He saw mm. the Eldani, five of them rebel. He saw the thousands of Narkina five rebel, and now he's seeing his home planet rebel, like. Yeah. Everyone's doing it. I get this. I can't I can't not be a part of this. Let's go. And Luthen sees that in him is like, "All right, man. Hell yeah. This is going to be great. You will live for four more years and be great." So, <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I just it's four more years. Thing about. Four <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Corey, you're vile oh, for that. One. That's amazing. That's I know, great. I know. Um all right, one more thing I want to talk about that uh, that came to me that I think was a very prominent theme of uh, this episode was the marching band. Uh, was such mm. a cool and clever band thing. Geeks unite! We did yeah, it. All right, so uh, I I was not in marching band because as we already discussed, my tiny little school didn't have anything except basketball and tennis. That was it. No marching band. But my wife, she was very prominent in marching band. She played French horn. She was in a Macy's Day parade one year. Whoa! Uh, my yeah, mom yeah, played French horn. French oh, horns nice. are cool. Yeah, so when when this episode opened was really really weird, right? The music was starkly different than any other yes. any other like this, that crazy. I think I don't I'm dumb and I don't remember what the, me, the musical term that my wife used, but she either called it like discordance or dissonance. Discordance. Yep, discordance yeah. is that what it is? Yeah, yeah that I think so. like it, it sounds chaotic, like when different yep. instruments are kind of playing at different keys or something like yeah. that, and like it's very it sounds bad, right? Like it's very kind of chaos yeah. sounding, and where and like it. 
and then when the it's like foreshadowing in a way like the yep. music is foreshadowing yep. in a way because it got it was very chaotic in the very beginning the music was and then it got a little better as the marching band like came together mm-hmm. and then it it genuinely created chaos like yep. the next scene is chaotic right and it was such a beautiful yep. sort of foreshadowing look at this the marching like towards the the empire with the instruments and also what clever Star Wars, I don't know, what do you call it when they do this? They they turn a real life thing into a Star Wars thing. All of these instruments, they look yeah. very Star Wars-y. Yeah, yeah they do. Star I know it's the creation cool. of the instruments. And because and, like I, I remember when Andor first came on, we heard about them playing live music on set. And they're like, okay, that's cool. Like they played some underscoring for some speeches. I guarantee this was played live as they marched. Yeah, Can you imagine being, being that actor, being Brasso, being the actor holding yeah. the holding the brick and marching as you hear yeah. the music around you like, yeah, you, know, you don't got to act at all. You're just yeah. like going, man. That would just be and it, it looks like they're it looks like they're all really playing the instruments too, and that's such a cool yeah. thing. I mean, this is not like I mean, do you remember the Cantina band playing the instruments? It looks goofy. <laughs> they all have these fake rubbery <laughs> fingers. Like it, it looks dumb. And they're just kind of like dancing do. around and like it looks like people yeah. pretending to play the flute. Like if I exactly. were to pick up a flute yeah. and try to play it or the <laughs> saxophone, I guess, that's what I would do. Yeah. You know, I just kind of like jiggle my fingers around and yeah, it was dumb, right? So like this was rad. I was I was really impressed with this. It looks like they're actually playing the instruments and uh yeah. Yeah, like, look at that. That's 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 a genuine wow. flute that they've made Star Wars. That's so yeah, cool, it's like dude. A vaporator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, All it, right. looks, yeah. it looks kind of like a it looks kind of like a Y-wing with a yeah. flute sticking out of it. Like and this also, is cool. Yeah, and it's and it things back to like mm. the first the end of the first arc on Ferrex like what how do we know the empire was coming? They banged on 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 things and made yeah. noise and made and made music and like and there's that moment in this episode where all the music ceases for a moment. And it's silent and you get a little freaked because you're like, wait, whoa, whoa. And then it starts up again. And like, again, in the history of revolutions, music, banging on drums, like blasting horns. Like that is a, that is a use for people to say the guy in the tower, the bell tower guy. We got our bell tower daddy back. Time grappler. (laughs) This guy, this guy's the best. I he kicked the shit him. out of that guy, and that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. That was the best of Sparta, dude. That was that this was is Yeah, it was. Well, and and there was a moment. I think it was a couple episodes ago where they were talking about the people of Ferrix and the ISB, and they're like, "Oh, oh, those people of Ferrix, they have their own way of doing things, and it's a little bit of like you know nose down. They're they're not as civilized as we are." And in this episode, like the music of Ferrix is a weapon. The literal bricks of their dead are weapons. Like the they the the city is used as a weapon to fight back against <clears throat> tyranny. And it's like that is how the rebellion's gonna go. Is using everyone as they are to fight back because the Empire is all about trying to make everyone the same, right? Trying to make cookie cutters, yeah. trying to make people mm-hmm. assimilate. And like, no, our strength is in our history, is in our dead, is in our people. And that is what they do in this literal scene. And ah, uh, it's just such it it's just such a great way to do it. It was. It was really, really brilliant. Um, just this overall, this whole lead up to the fight is just man, it yeah. was brilliant. I Ooh, just lead up, you said Lita. Let's talk about Mon Mothman for a second. And Lita, <laughs> who Lita. um Okay, I was like, where are we going with that? Yeah, we're going there, man. Uh <clears throat> Ven, not a lot of screen time in this one, not really the focus, but Two major moments that we highlighted, right? The parent moment and then the, not necessarily betrothal, but at least the introduction that definitely seemed like a mm. way of her getting out of her money habits. And man, yeah, Jennifer Mon Mothma O'Reilly. Has, has sold her soul to the devil, man. That's the, uh, that's the analogy here, oh, right? She's selling she her soul. Empty, like, this is brilliant. Man. Look at that. I know. I love this. Wearing those colors too. Cause I didn't like, mm. she's all white except for this episode. Like now she's actually like pretending to assimilate. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and her daughter. Wow, that, look at the mm. look at the look at the octagon shape back there. The very imperial looking. Like it's a great apartment. Really, I gotta say, I'm sorry. It's a great apartment. I, it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's too uh, it's too rich for my blood. So they say. Yeah. <laughs> um, how how does she end the season for us? What do you like? I I, I mean, don't think any of us predicted it correctly. Um, no, I was just thinking about I was thinking about last week's predictions mm-hmm. about stuff that we got right. I, I will say, just in general. Like we didn't progress in the like story of the rebellion as a whole nearly as much as I expected to, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like they really yeah. did tie that this really is Cassian's story. I mean, it's not, yep. I mean, it is about the greater rebellion, but like I'm really shocked that we didn't end this with Mon Mothma of running away or I know it's you know, not that kind of show. Yeah, it's not that kind of show. So, like, 
um, I was very interested with with this. I thought the the whole accusation about gambling thing was brilliant. That, that was, was brilliant cool. yeah. because she had me going the whole time, and I was just like, "Well, what kind of proof does she have? Does what somebody does tell her? Yeah. How did yeah. she yeah. know that the driver was yeah. going to turn the audio back on without her knowing? Yep. But her actually knowing. Yeah. There is. Do you guys a... feel bad for Perrin for like a half a second? Absolutely not. No, oh, I thought it was. <laughs> listen, I thought it was. I I fell just the way the empire is gonna fall. Like I I I thought it was a real accusation. I thought she was. Mm -hmm. I thought she was finally kind of snapping a little bit yep. of like, maybe he does actually have a gambling problem, and she's mad about. Yep. It. I didn't realize until it showed the driver that right. oh, she's yeah. manipulating the driver. Yes, yeah. like she knew the driver was listening. So, and there's really a lot of ways that this can be sort of used, right? This could be. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. This, this could be. Um, like that's where all the money went, right? Is he gambled mm -hmm. it away? Mm -hmm. This could be the way that the empire was talking about it in this. Was that this episode? I think it was. Yeah. The way this empire yeah. was talking about uh, it was Levin like, heard about it. Yeah. Like they're going to try to blackmail her kind of with it is yeah. maybe they sort of what use, that was implied. Yeah, we can use this. Yeah. Very interesting. I don't know. This was very interesting that it showed me that it, that it showed us that the empire is guessing wrong. Like that was yeah. clever. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's interesting, too, because, you know, obviously mm. we've seen that Mon Mothma and Perrin do not have a great marriage. That has been the thing. It's been hard. But as I watched this, I think because of Genevieve O'Reilly's performance, I did get a little bit of the vibe that at one point, I think she did love her husband. I think yeah. she was like, you know what? Maybe she was younger. I know it's an arranged marriage, blah, blah, blah. But at some point, she was like, all right, we're going to have a child. This is my husband. And you could see her kind of have that little realization of like, he is going to hate me now. And I'm just going to own that. And yeah. the empire is, but, but I have to now sacrifice my husband. Who real is, crossroads, and, man. Yeah, yeah. He is an asshole and sure he's all these things, but I will now besmirch his reputation <clears throat> and make him hate me. She really sells everything. Yep. I mean, she sells her entire soul genuinely yeah. to her, the rebellion. Her daughter's future. She's like, I She need sells this. her daughter. She sells her husband. She sells her life. She literally gives it all away. And, you know, to be in a position yeah. of power and to trade all of that for the rebellion yeah. is is a really beautiful story that I was yep. not expecting to no. get in the show yeah. at all. No. Holy shit. Oh, no. They, they really, really did nail that too, man. Are there <laughs> any quotes that come off, like come on top of your head from Return of the Jedi or anything that – like alludes to this happening early in her life. She's a head. Many Bothans died. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's it. Only, like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. Or like, General Nadine. That's her only dialogue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so, in right. Return yeah, of the Jedi. No, I didn't even think was, about that. <laughs> no, yeah, she has no they, dialogue, which is crazy, dude. Though this show yeah. is like, when, when did Empire come out? Eighty six, maybe. 80, 80, uh, 84? eighty four. Empire was eighty. It was seventy seven, eighty, eighty three. 83 was, was Return, Return of the Jedi. Jedi yeah. yeah, so Return of the Jedi 83 was, yeah, this, that's the only dialogue she freaking had in the whole movie. Yeah. And now she's like a major character in this TV show all these years later. What other, yeah. how many characters are left? Is there anybody yeah. left that they can, <laughs> that they can bring back? Of from course the there OT? are. Of course yeah. there are. They'll find them. But it's so organic and in such a great way. And and I think that that's like, you know, she was really the one character that, we knew was like precast was like she was in revenge of the Sith deleted scenes like they couldn't really do a lot with her and oh my god how lucky that you happen to get this actress who could do yeah. everything yeah you know yeah. based on yeah. a casting from 20 years ago very very like, good that too. is yeah I, i've loved I've, I've i've really genuinely enjoyed the mon mothma stuff that we've gotten yeah. i mean it's it's much yep. more than i really expected to i mean it's Where's been a fun little out? fun little look into the uh into the the Senate and the rebellion. I am shocked that we didn't get Bail Organa. I, when we Yet. first started the season, I was I'm like, sure. I can't hope. I think season two, and I think that makes sense. Um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna pause there for a second because I want to get into season two speculation because I'm very excited to talk about Bail. Anything else I want to I want to hit on either this episode or season one because mm -hmm. I think there's a there's a really fun way to end this episode for yes. us to talk about a little bit of season two. Well, so Charles, we gotta hit it. we gotta say one thing because we really didn't talk about Dedra or Cyril. Yeah, okay, and, yeah. Let's hit this. Let's hit this. And the moment you brought up our predictions <laughs> earlier, and I predicted that Cyril was going to attack Dedra. Oh, and wow. yeah, you so did. So she was like You're laying down in the right. dirt. <laughs> right? 
she was laying down in the dirt. She lost her gun. She was going to get trampled. And then some hands grabbed her and started leading her away. And you realize it's Cyril and he's got her at gunpoint. And he was taking her away. And I was like, oh my God, it's happening. And then they went in this like closet. They went in this closet and I was like, he's going to do it. He's going to shoot her or he's going to attack her or something. And then 45 seconds later, I'm like, are, are they going to hook up in this closet right now? Yeah. Like, there was so much heavy breathing and close oh, yeah. talking in this closet it was oh, a yeah. very it was a very very intentionally uncomfortable situation. it was it like, was it, yeah it feels like we're not supposed to be there like it feels yeah. icky i don't know what it is about yeah. the scene it's just it's very <laughs> it's yeah. the people it's the people yeah. that are in it. I, I think they it's just detra. do it right i think because so detra is like she's almost going through a like you can see the adrenaline wearing off like she's literally shaking her yeah. body mm -hmm. right she's like coming down and she's like, I should. She says, I sh I feel like I should say thank you. Yeah, but she but knows she, that he's like a freaking psychopath, right? Yeah. So she's like, so she doesn't know what to yeah. say. Yeah, and he's like, I mean, we could kiss. And, she's just, she's she just <laughs> showing. She's <laughs> we could kiss. Well, but no, I think that's uh, an important thing though. Is that yeah. he? It it felt weirdly romantic, but like he had no expectation whatsoever. Like he was no. just like, I, you were in trouble and I saved you. Yeah. yeah. And he I mean, idolizes her. He does. He does. He does and yeah. I think this is then, you know, now we're going to see her actually mm -hmm. use him, whether that's bringing him into the empire itself or whether he's like a secret operative of hers. Yeah. I don't know, but I think he just wants to rub her feet, Charles. I think that's oh. all it is. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. House of the dragon. I feel you. Um, oh. Although here's an I here's a question or something I didn't notice till you played that clip there, Wes. She is like violently shaking mm -hmm. at that point. He is calm Stoic. as a cucumber. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and I didn't realize that. I'm like, that's also her seeing him. That calm is probably a little freaky. Of being like, wait, yeah. there's a riot. People are dying. There are explosions, and Cyril is just like, you are in trouble. Like I he's know. definitely a psycho, but she's got to be like, it, oh. is it not? Is it not that hat? That hat, dude. <laughs> the hat scene. That hat, we, we, <laughs> dude, we, we didn't talk about the hat scene. That was such an odd. That was such an odd thing. That was weird. Our Scottish I, king, uh, Sergeant Mosk, is that his name? Mosk, yes. Yeah. That was such an odd yeah. scene. I think it so was supposed weird. to be some comic relief. And then also I saw, I think on Reddit or something that somebody said that it's like the original hat that he had on, like the that Cyril had on in the beginning of the show or something. Oh, I sure. It totally is. It has, yeah. It's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an officer's hat or something yeah. maybe. And like, like it's, it's like symbolic that, that he's in command. So he gets the officer's uniform hat or some shit. I don't know. This was such I an odd, so it was weird. such an, such it's an odd, odd <laughs> choice. <laughs> I don't, and they all shrug. I don't yeah, exactly. I, I don't I hate it. So much. Like, I'm like, this, all right. Yeah. Look at this book. They designed this entire bus for this one freaking scene. Like, look at this. I, love it. Beautiful. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. That was God. interesting. Cyril, Cyril is still, I think one of the most interesting characters in the show that yes. like, yeah. yes, I just really have no idea what the hell he's going to do. No. I think that is the point of his character is he's a literally a loose cannon. I have no idea what side he's on. He's on Dedra's side. That's obvious. That, yeah. Right. Yep. But like, Oh yeah. What is Dedra seeing him now? Is, is she going to see him as an, as an asset that she can like use now? That's what he wants. Yeah. I think. I think, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause in this episode, she had the moment where when they killed Krieger, she's like, what are you doing? Like you're not listening to me. You're not doing this. And I think she's about to find someone that's a little bit of a psycho, but will also listen to her no matter what. So maybe yeah, that's her. That's yeah. that's his usage. That's not. That is weirdly not bound by the rules of the empire in a way. Yes. That's my yeah, opinion. At least that's a okay. that's a good way to go with that. That was an interesting uh, storyline too. That that to kind of see all of these people who have shown a lot of intelligence with the ISB. They've shown a lot of intelligence and like. And like, like they could, they're dangerous, man. Like they really do understand oh, yeah. the empire and the rebellion and power. And they understand all that stuff, but they're like drunk with, what is it? Like pride, I guess, at, at just yeah. annihilating all these people without taking any hostages yeah. to torture and get information out of like, <laughs> well, how they arrogant. Think that they're all, uh, it, it's the, uh, it, it's the captain on Altani, right? They think that everyone not in the empire are kind of like savages or something. They're less, yeah. they're lesser intelligence. Like they don't respect these people. They don't assume that they would get information because what information could they possibly have that we don't have? That we could, that we could use, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's just like, it's just crazy that Dedra is the only one Smugness. that 
Exactly. Smugness. She's, yeah. Ezra's the only one that sees through it. Like she understands it the way that nobody else seems to understand, which is yeah. interesting. And also yeah. the downfall of the empire. So I just, man, Dedra is yeah. such an interesting character. The, the inclusion of the ISB, I think was the, the other gigantic surprise for me in this show, going back mm-hmm. to the big picture yep. stuff. Yep. Like yep. I really wasn't expecting to get ISB and everything that we learned about them mm-hmm. was, was really fun and really brilliant and interesting yep. and the power dynamics and the political stuff. Like it yep. felt like Tar- Tarkin type of stuff. And yeah, man, I was a big fan of, <laughs> of the ISB arc as well. Yeah. And now, now I see here, uh, there's a couple of characters we haven't touched on that I want to make sure we hit before we get into the next season. Uh, Wes, <clears throat> you had, uh, we did not talk a lot about them, uh, but definitely some great scenes for Cinta and Bix. Um, yes, correct. Yeah. So um, when we first saw Cinta, she's working in, is it a bar that she's working at? It's a, one of the yeah. bars. A, yeah. Um, yeah. Tina or a hotel, maybe. A yes. Kind of looking place. Yeah. yeah. Um, and oh, uh, Vel comes back to see her, and she yeah. is just and Cinta is using her binoculars just to keep yeah. keep a lookout of the officers Step and ISB agent at that. <laughs> and I think yeah. I think in that particular scene, Vel finally realizes that they cannot be a couple because she is yeah. too invested in the Empire, and Vel she wants something her up from more. From the airport. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yo, oh, that's a bad move. Ta- that's a bad move the right list. there. I'm spying. <laughs> I was busy. I know. It's a good um, point, though. And in that yeah. moment, there kind of catapulted her next scene is when she actually like in some guy's life. It's an officer, right? It's oh, one of the one of the big officers. Yeah, she's just and like, she shakes this guy. Ha! And shakes the right shit there. Out. Twice! And then, we, and then we come around then we come around later and she's like, she's bleeding and she's like, it's not <laughs> yeah. my blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, Cinta's, Cinta, as the kids would say, is a real one. Like, yes. Cinta is, she, is hard. She's all in. And I was like, yes. yeah, uh, she's all rebellion and it's it's her it's the rebellion first and then relationship second or yep, third maybe yep. it might be not even be a second first God then America <laughs> then family you know what I mean someone's been to a lot of weddings this year Corey <laughs> <laughs> and then um, not to mention Bix like yeah. how oh. broken does Bix like look to you and what she's saying she's like if somebody came and broke me out of jail I'm out of there right I am yeah. not even thinking twice and she's like no 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 they're gonna they're gonna get mad. Yeah. They're like they're gonna yeah. get mad. Oh or man, she she's, like, well, dude! Like, I just I, shot like four of them while we ain't here. I'd say, yeah, they're no. pretty mad. <laughs> and she thought he was a hallucination for a second too. Like I dreamed yeah. that you came and got me. And like, I mean, one shout out um to uh, to <clears throat> is it Adria? I forgot her. I forget her name. Zach actress. Like, what a performance! Right? She this, looks like such season. a different person compared to the first episode made a great makeup job on her and everything but yeah like her whole mannerisms and her voice and like her barely opening her eyes and stuff it's amazing she's such a great job yeah i I think there was a um there was a time in which i really thought that all the main all the characters that we got from ferrix in the beginning were maybe going to swing around to the rebellion at some point and Mm. yeah i don't know what what happens to bix at at this point i mean she's pretty messed up get her safe I, i think that's like you know I love that at the end, you know, Cassian's like, all right, get it. Just get out of here. You know, I'll find you. I do believe that. But I do think that, you know, to your point, Wes, like how broken is she? Like what's going to happen? I don't think she's never at a hundred again. What I just noticed is she looks a little bit better in this picture. Yes. She was looked terrible. (laughs) She does. Yeah. Like she doesn't have like her, uh, the darkness around her eyes is not as gone, but she was in a dark room too, I guess. And she believes in Cassie and she's like, I, he, he will come back and she's called him out throughout this whole show. Yeah. And I think when, you know, when B is worried, she's like, no, he'll come back. He'll find us. He'll find us. And all right. I will. That's the question. Does he, you know, we'll find that out in season two. Do you think that, uh, do you think that Cassian's sister was a storytelling device and nothing else? I think I think it comes back around in season two. I don't know if he you finds think her. You think so? Is he ever gonna find her? I don't know. I, Once we I get that previously will. in season one recap, and it, they just showed like his sister getting shot, then yes, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. gonna come right back around. It to might. That. They always they yeah. always throw that recap yeah. in there to make you remember. What happened four episodes ago? You're yeah, like, that's, oh crap! That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. Point. It doesn't seem to be Tony Gilroy's style to leave ends Things, loose. You know what I mean? So, yeah, right. So I don't yeah, know. So so yeah. So let's let's uh 
let's go into season two speculation here for a bit and then uh, then let's go around and just kind of just recap favorite favorite season one stuff as a whole but looking ahead to your earlier point Corey, i definitely i definitely think and not just because of my fandom we're we're easily getting jimmy smith <clears throat> J- bale is going to be in season two think they so. He and Mon Mothma have too much of a casual conversation in Rogue One for them not to have met up a bunch before that. Ah, oh, yes. I think, Good point. You know, like, your friend, the Jedi, like, she knows that Obi-Wan exists. Like, they're tight. Yeah. Mm. Um, we know we're getting Yavin. I think that does happen. Um, but I think it'll be interesting for pacing because one of, one of the few um, you know, criticisms about the show for some folks that didn't care as much was that it was a little slower of a show, which I loved. But I think, like, you know, we only went through really a couple months, Max. Because we're adults, Eric. <laughs> exactly. I can watch a television show. But we're going to get three episodes, time jump, three episodes, time jump. Like, we know that's going to happen. So I think, honestly, anything's in play. Like, we're going to yeah. watch the rebellion grow. And I think we will literally see the base on Yavin get bigger and bigger in season two. That would until be an we get interesting to the rings device, yeah. What are the – what's the arcs? Um, the time-wise for the first arc is – Four years. Uh, so between season one and season two, we have one year time jump. So okay. first episode of season two is four years, is four BBY, three episodes. Then we go three BBY, three episodes, two BBY, and then three episodes. It's one BBY, and then the last episode gets Cassie and basically walking into the rings of Kefreen to uh, kill that yep. guy. Yeah, yeah. And That's Tony Gilbert so actually cool. said that at a celebration. I cannot believe yeah. he gave that much. Very away. straightforward was, about it. It was unbelievable. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, the first season is about this year of." Cassian's life from the second season is a bunch of time jumps. This is literally what he said, basically. And yep. This is going to be very interesting. I imagine we're going to get a gigantic Galen Erso story. Um, in oh, there. yeah. Because they're looking because for him. They got to know who he is. Him. That's what Rogue One is about, is yeah. they're looking for, you know. Yep. They're looking for his daughter. So, like, yeah, that's going to be fantastic. Yep. <laughs> you have talents. <laughs> talents. <laughs> really oh. a man of your talents yeah. also uh Cassian it's a simple saw, life <laughs> uh, <laughs> that movie's so good uh cassian and saw cannot meet that's the thing because cassian they, they're looking for saw so how does that happen when does luthan exit the picture because he's not in rogue one right so at some yeah. point oh it's true and also Lu- luthan knows saw directly and then by Rogue One, they have no way to contact Saw. So what breaks that? And I think that's we got to see that. <clears throat> that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good point. We still have to get Mon Mothma's leaving the rebellion or leaving yep. the Empire. I imagine yep. that'll be a pretty significant story. Yeah. Um, when, when does K two S O come into the? He fold? is on. Yep. Tony has talked about him a bunch. Wow. Okay. So there's a comic <laughs> where they meet. If you love that K two S O Cassian comic. I love that for you. I've read it. I don't think there's a chance in hell they do not retcon that comic. <laughs> like, no, there's no way. <laughs> that will, <laughs> that will, that will finally be, that will finally be uh, the one piece of real criticism that you can give the show is when Tony <laughs> yeah. Gilroy, no. the the but, patron saint of Star Wars right now yeah. at this moment, uh, retcons will the not give a shit. The K2SO comic. <laughs> no. Absolutely, it's not, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a great comic either. It's, if I remember it's, correctly, it's, it's not that, it's not that good. But also, can yeah. you imagine me like Tony? He's like, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna bring Alan Tudyk in. I, I I directed him on Rogue. We're gonna bring K2SO in. Oh cool, you know what they meant in a comic? What? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you think you think Tony Gilroy has ever read a comic book before? I'm sure. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Surely. He probably read Watchmen. It was like it's good. And then this went yeah. on his life. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely like just so blown away with the show that I, I don't have any real predictions for mm. the second season. I mean, I feel like whatever they want, I, I feel like whatever they want. And like, I'm, I'm here for the surprise. I mean, I, I would yeah. certainly like for it to be unpredictable. This show was definitely unpredictable. I mean, yes. Yeah. Nothing happened in a way that I expected to, which is very rare in a TV TV shows as an adult. I mean, there's a pattern with yeah. shows, and you expect things to happen, and right. right, you know, even even when they do something crazy like kill off a main character or something, you can still there's evidence things are coming often, and and like you feel like Star Wars especially, I feel like is guilty of this. Like you really know what's happening. Yeah, and uh, this it's very rare that I think you're able to go into a show every episode completely naive of what can happen, and and this show has been that. So like. 
you know, yeah. they, they have, they have my full blessing to tell whatever story they want to tell. I don't care. Yeah, with the retcon, yeah. Everything retcon Luke, Make it I good. shit. Like I, <laughs> no, Luke grew up on, he grew up on, on Geonosis, not tattooing. I don't give a shit. All right. Like yeah. literally Is Tony the good? Can do anything he wants. <laughs> like I'm just so blown away with how good the story is. Um, yeah. I, and I will, one other thing I will say too, that this is a bit negative is I'm also very shocked and surprised at how fast the internet has turned on uh, Dave Filoni and uh, John yeah. Favreau is shocking to me, yeah. frankly. I mean, yeah. the same we're, people we that like were, that, remember, <laughs> yeah, right. This, the same people that were demanding we fire Kathleen Kennedy in, in state, in state, you know, Dave Filoni are now calling for yeah. Filoni's head. It's pretty bizarre actually to see it's this. It's gotten extreme. Yeah. Yeah, people are saying yeah. fire Filoni and shit. It's like, yeah. what the hell? Where is this coming from? Yeah. Like, remember when Luke Skywalker met Ahsoka and mm -hmm. you and we were all like, oh my god! Like, come on. Yeah, that's like, amazing. But you know, what but you know what? If if the majority of Star Wars was like Andor, you would you would like something that Filoni made a whole lot, and the and the situation might be in reverse. I mean, it's just yep. all we want is like fresh new yeah. stories, and that's yeah. what this was, yeah. and that's why Make it's so them exciting. Well. So yeah, man. I mean, Filoni did that with Mando. I mean, when Mando season one came out, oh my god, the the world was on fire. I mean, exactly. and wait till the next season of Mando comes out yeah. because all this stuff is cyclical, and people are crazy, mm. man. People are crazy. Just have a good time. Watch so, what you love, and I think. Do yeah. you think? Do you think they go over the top? In the second season, and bring cameos in know. that we shouldn't. I think it is have. certain. No, I think it. I think it's certainly. Not. I actually think it's certainly a risk, to be honest, because like, Krennic, I, Tarkin. No. If we, Vader, if we get, no. Palpatine, no. none no. of those. Well, uh, Palpatine, maybe I can see a Palpatine speech. I mean, we did get multiple cameos in in this show. I mean, like, like even it's not it's not the same type of cameo where Luke Skywalker comes in and kicks everybody's ass, but we did yeah. get Saul, Saul Guerrero. Saul didn't That's really a cameo. Need to like, be in it. That's Not true. Really, yeah. no. they, they could I think have we get bail. Him, so. And I think, um, I mean, I here's a, a, cam a cameo one. by definition is also not supposed to be an important role. So by having yeah. <clears throat> by yeah, having right. a character come in and be an important role, it's almost not really a a, a, a cameo. cameo yeah. It's just it's just an important character that has a lot to do with this uh, yeah. particular timeline of events. So like, yeah. I, th I think right. rogue characters, I would say specifically, other than, like like Tarkin, Krennic. I think no, only because the the beauty of Rogue is them like this is the first time these characters are interacting. Like that that story yeah. is 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 solidified. But rebellion people, I think Maybe. Bale, here's a crazy one. I don't think this will happen, but like Akbar. They have an actress <laughs> who who will be cast as Hera Syndulla in Ahsoka. It's General true. Syndulla is mentioned in Rogue One. Yeah, I don't think is. they do it. We just have we're dangerously close all to we a lot is, of characters. All we need is the head tails. <laughs> the head tails turn back yeah. around in the back and her just walking yeah. away and you're like around a corner. We know what like, that is. Ah! We know what that is, yeah, and I appreciate that. That would be that. fine. That would be fine. <laughs> I think that I think that if we are genuinely approaching the plot of, of Rogue One, um, which we are, obviously, with the second yep, season, yep. I think there is a fairly high risk of of a little bit of that campiness to leak into the show. And if they are able to pull off the second season without doing that. I think yeah. it, that it's unprecedented yeah. <laughs> in Star well, Wars for sure. Like, yeah. I'll tell you the craziest seasons, thing. There's no like, way. Thinking about season two, I I would have never have guessed this. I am way more excited to see a a, a really quiet scene between Brasso and B two Emo than I am about a cameo from Harrison Dula. Yeah, which is I'm too. crazy. But you know, I'm but too. like, you know what I mean? Like, that's and I uh, the, the question. So the, the question is, no. do the majority of people want that? And does it matter if people? And does Tony like Gilroy give a shit? Yeah, yeah. Does Tony Gilroy <laughs> give a shit? Question. And are the right people being loud enough? Because, like, I don't know. It's after after the rise of Skywalker. I don't. I don't know that I trust like whoever is involved in the decision making to like read yeah. the internet and make the right call. You know what I mean? Like, just write your show, man. Just write your show in a bubble. In a vacuum. Write it on in a, a vacuum. typewriter. I don't Literally. want you guys to know anything. Never open Reddit ever. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously. No. Right. And now, so, but it is shooting now. So I believe they started shooting. Uh, hey, Dale, happy Monday. I believe they started shooting Andor season two last week. Um, so it's wow. crazy. now officially I in production. They, I would have think they were already in or almost done with it. Nope. Yeah. We're yeah. likely that's getting good. this. That's, that, that's yeah. good, I think, because we're, we're in the... 
we're in this period of the discussion analysis and speculation now. And yeah. if they're immediately, they're not able to listen to, they can't change shit no. now. It's, it's already built in the budget. It. You know what I mean? They so, had to write it. So yeah. I think we'll probably get this. My, my guess with post-production, all this stuff is 12 episodes again. I'm assuming spring 2024 would be my yeah, assumption. Safe. Um, wow. But between now and then we get bad batch season two is coming up soon. Mando season three is coming up soon. Ahsoka is going to happen before the end of next year. We obviously get a lot. So as we look ahead to the future, <sighs> let's take a second. 12 episodes of Andor. We had 12 full episodes. This thing was this thing was massive um, and did so much, introduced so many characters. I just want to go around and just off the top of your head, some of your favorite moments of season one. Not that need to be replicated, not that blah, blah, blah. Just when you think about season one of Andor, what's the stuff that hits you? Um, Charles, I'm going to put you on the spot. Start us off. Favorite moments of season one. Um, pretty much anything involving Aunt Petunia, AKA Marva. Um, yes. I mean, absolutely. really when she came into the picture, all of her scenes, she was masterful. My yeah. eyes were glued to the screen and, and seeing her relationship with Cassian, you know, knowing they're not actually related, but seeing kind of their origins and yeah. seeing how close they grew and how they had this kind of bittersweet ending to their relationship. All of that was just phenomenal. Perfect. Dang, what a great choice. Uh, Corey, about you, man? Oh, man, several things come to mind immediately. That Just pick one. The lightsabers. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, that was like, I've never been so hyped about a, a special effect in, in Star Wars. That was the coolest I've ever seen in my life. The blowing yeah. up the dish was unbelievable. Luthen's mm -hmm. speech was unbelievable. I mean, this show has a lot to remember really, really fondly. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't think I've... I've never watched Mandalorian season two again. I've never watched, um, I haven't watched Bad Batch again. I haven't watched uh, uh, Boca Boba Fett again. And I do generally want to sit down and watch the show, like, you know, kind of binge it over a couple of days Same. now. I really and, do. Uh, that's wild, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. after talking about it and all the hours that we've given the show of our lives already, I kind of kind of want to go watch it again just because there's so much to love about it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's what you got. I did like the whole um the whole prisoner atmosphere um their environment the relationships they had the like Prison how they communicated great. with each other from different pods and different like bridges that they were standing on um the speech phenomenal the way they got um the way they got uh, Andy Circus to like completely turn Kino Kino, oh, Kino Loy wow yeah yeah, yeah. um and it's that that last scene where he just smiles. He's like, "I can't swim. I can't swim." He's just like, I'm gonna "Stick with me forever, what? man. <laughs> guess I'm gonna die." <laughs> I guess. But does he? You know, that'd be a great. Yeah. They're a great little cameo to show up in season two. Yeah. He know yeah. he Boy. survives, but just barely. And then the emperor yep. comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Spider right. legs because half his body got <laughs> bit it. off by a shark. Spider legs, <laughs> Snoke. Oh God. Uh, uh, great okay. ones. Eric, agreed how about all, you? Agreed with all of y'all. Masterful moments. I'm going to go all the way back. And I'm going to go with those last few moments of uh, of season th uh, of episode three. Um, <clears throat> when everyone's banging on on the, the pots and pans. And Marva's giving her monologue about that's when you really need to fret. That's when <clears throat> it stops. Like that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And ending with Cassie going off into the sun. Um, realizing that the rebellion is kind of beginning, yeah, and Cyril looking over his kind of destruction <laughs> and like realize because I remember I will remember that moment because I watched all I took the day off or the morning off and I watched all three of them in a row. And I remember at that moment, I had a similar moment to when I read Light of the Jedi for the first time and I close the book and I and I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh god, this this changes things. This is not Star Wars is different than it was before I watched this. Mm. And I think that was a really heavy moment for me. Also, last minute shout out to Chief Hines from the first episodes, our guy who just wanted to do his job and go home. <laughs> and Cyril wouldn't let it go. One of the, he wanted one to of the go on vacation. It's even worse. Yeah. He wanted to go on vacation. He came yes. back and everything was on fire. Poor guy. One, one of the best <laughs> just little scenes. Like, Wait, one. All, 
Yeah. One more thing too. Go for it. What was the what was the name of the natural phenomenon on Eldani? Because that was still one the of the most eye. impressive. The things. eye. The oh eye. my yes. god. Man, oh my god. About all that. that oh my god. The whole Eldani plot. There's god, yes. so many good arcs in this god. show. So there was the the introduction arc, the escape yep. from so the Eldani arc, and then the, the Aldani arc, the prison yep. arc, and then the the finale. Return to Ferrix. Yeah. My God, this show was phenomenal. I just I would literally you know, Corey, you say you want to rewatch the whole thing. I agree completely. I they would never do it. But if there was like an indie movie theater that says, Hey, we're gonna show all twelve episodes oh, of Andor on the big screen in a row for like a marathon day or wow. like a merit weekend, I'd be like, Hell yeah. I'll take because one small popcorn with refills <laughs> and just keep going back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Because oh that's, I mean, this is this is the first. I've loved Star Wars shows. I mean, hey, we talked on Bounty Hunt about how much we loved Obi Wan. Like, Obi Wan is, I, I adored. Mando had a great time with. Like, I've liked a lot of these shows. <laughs> this was the first show, ironically, the least action of them all, that I was yeah. really like, God, I wish I could see all these on a giant screen, because yeah, I want to I mean, see every minute. It's it's up there just with incredible television, like Breaking Bad and Yep, and Brothers and. I mean, God, I just can't believe how good it was. Like, yeah, I just ten out of ten. I, that says I'm, I'm I'm genuinely speechless <laughs> about how amazing the show was, and I cannot say that enough. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels undeserved. <laughs> yeah, I just the Star Wars fandom is awful as it sometimes is. I just cannot believe we were rewarded with such a, a beautiful storytelling yeah. initiative, and I'm not sure if we will ever get this kind of experience again it's just so unprecedented i mean even yeah. with all the all the hundreds of hours of content we have with animation <laughs> and movies and everything it's just like we've never had anything as good before no. it's just been incredible and, and we're uh, guaranteed I'm, 12 more we're guaranteed, guaranteed exactly 12 the amount more. we have yeah get it. same teams doing yep. stuff is just uh this is fun I, I i will say you know me being a huge rogue one fan like i was really looking forward to this project but like i don't know it weirdly felt like the project that was never going to happen like yeah even they in celebration, it. we were like, huh, okay, oh yeah, yeah, Andor is happening, right? Like they <laughs> did they announced it like first, I believe. Wasn't it one yeah. of the first TV shows yeah. they announced? Way back like when. it was yep. very, very early. Yep. And they said, I think we even knew about Andor before we knew about the Mandalorian. Like, we like they have. said, they said that we're making this Andor TV show. They teased it years ago. And like, yeah, we suddenly got it. And I'm just so shocked that we got it and it would turn out to be as good as it was. Like, never would have guessed it'd be better than the Obi-Wan show. That show was fun. Yeah, but now, now time. looking at the Obi Wan show, that that show is chalk with flaws now in my mind because <laughs> this thing was so damn good. So, you know, I have to retroactive. It's, it's, it has genuinely created a new lens by which to to go back and and watch Star Wars with. And uh, yep. you know, we said a lot. We started a podcast at seemingly the best time ever to start a Star Wars podcast, Wild. and uh, Wild. it's just been super super fun to talk about this and digest it and. I don't consider myself like a movie buff or somebody who's intelligent enough to understand all the storytelling devices and stuff. It just feels like there's been more stuff to digest and talk about with this show than anything else we've had. And uh, yep. it's just been, it's been a fun to watch it as a fan. It's been fun to participate with the community as a content creator. And like, overall, I just feel very warm and fuzzy about this entire experience <laughs> getting to watch yeah. and, or, and participate in it with you guys. And uh I'm ready for 12 more episodes of this shit, man. Give me more. Yeah. Pump it yeah, straight baby. into my veins, for real. Yep. All in. Uh, well, everyone, um, if you didn't like it, Dr. Like Quad Paw finishes this out. No other way <laughs> yes. to do it. No Your gloves. boy, Thanks, Charles. Us. Your boy. He's coming back in season two. Yeah. Oh, easily. There's only one doctor in that edge of the galaxy. <laughs> um, so, everyone, we hope you loved Andor. If you didn't, what a weird episode for you, huh? Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, cannot wait for more of course we're gonna chat about everything that comes out in star wars but my gosh what a gift what a gift around this holiday season and or was truly the gift for all of us but my friends that will do it for this gift that is this week's episode of the living force i hope if you are to support us on patreon thank you so much we appreciate you uh you are the reason that we are able to keep our engines going and a special thank you to Brian Dooley, Patrick Ortiz, Earl Q, Robert Thomas, and Carl Sander on our Jedi High Council, and Elizabeth Cloutier, Ashley Ingalls, and Sally and Chris Eilerson on our Alliance High Command. You can find us on Twitter at Living Force Pod and individually at Eric Eilerson, at Corey M. Helton, at C. Hankel, and at Boss West. A special thank you to Matt Davenport, our amazing editor, Ryan, our graphic designer extraordinaire, and Wes, our producer and community manager. Thank you to Corey Charles and Wes for potting with me tonight. Thanks to all of you for hanging out, watching, and listening. And as always, may the force be with you.